You like the iMac Pro, don't you, Marquez? Hey, what is up guys, I'm KBHD here, and in my last video, in that WWDC recap, we talked a little bit about the brand new announced iMac Pro, and I kind of mentioned it possibly being a little bit of a trap, and I wanted to elaborate on that a little bit. So keep in mind, this is a brand new product, and it was announced, but we're not actually gonna see it until about six months down the road. It's gonna be in December of this year. Pretty rare move from Apple, but this is, until then, everything we know is definitely true about the new iMac Pro. So first off, it's gonna look, from the outside, like any other iMac, but space gray. So this behind me is the brand new 2017 KB Lake 27 inch iMac, and it's a pretty high end machine in a lot of ways by itself. The iMac Pro takes this shell, this exact same body, paints it matte black or space gray if you wanna call it that, and completely redoes all the insides. So for the iMac Pro CPU, you'll be able to pick between an eight core, 10 core, or 18 core workstation grade Intel Xeon CPU. This will have turbo speeds up to 4.5 gigahertz out the box, absolute monster chips. It'll also have a choice between AMD Radeon Vega workstation GPUs, which aren't even announced yet. This event was basically an announcement for these graphics cards because you can't find them anywhere else. It'll start at 32 gigs of ECC memory and will go up to 128 gigs of RAM. And it's all flash storage, SSD only, so it'll start at one terabyte of flash storage and go up to four terabytes of flash storage. And it's fast flash storage at about three gigabytes per second throughput, so awesome there. And what's really interesting is the iMac Pro will have this new completely redesigned thermal architecture to make this all possible. Sounds a lot like the trash can Mac Pro. Lots of workstation parts crammed into a small space with a completely new thermal architecture and new fans to make it all possible. And then of course up front, it'll also have this updated 5 5K display. It's updated, meaning it's a little bit brighter, up to 500 nits. It supports the entire P3 color gamut. It's already a great display. It's a little glossy for my tastes, and we'll get to that in a little bit, but it's already a pretty great 5K panel. And then the ports on the back of the iMac are updated as well, so you get your headphone jack, you get an SD card slot, four USB 3 ports, four Thunderbolt 3 USB-C ports, and a 10 gig ethernet port. And back there you can also see the new vents on the back that aren't on the backs of normal iMacs, so some serious ventilation to go along with this new cooling system. And then as a nice little touch, the iMac Pro comes with some exclusive space gray accessories, a matte gray trackpad, a matte gray magic keyboard with number pad, and a gray magic mouse to top it all off. So, should you buy it? Who is going to buy an iMac Pro? Well, first off, this iMac, this highest end regular 2017 iMac, is already a pretty high end machine in a lot of ways, like we've said, and it's probably more power than most enthusiasts or casual users just buying an iMac ever really need. The iMac Pro leapfrogs all of this, and it actually even leapfrogs the current trash can Mac Pro in terms of power. But then you have to expect the new modular Mac Pro coming next year to even leapfrog that, and it's going to be modular. So it's going to be way more upgradable down the line, better expandability, upgradability, customization, etc. And the iMac Pro isn't coming out till December, like we said. So by the time that comes out and you're getting your hands on it, the new modular Mac Pro will be right around the corner. And then second off, Apple's made it pretty clear that the vast majority of people that are buying Apple desktops, Apple Mac desktops, are buying iMacs. And that makes perfect sense. I mean, what other choices do you have? Do you have the Mac Mini? Pretty small, not that powerful, not very popular. You might have forgotten it existed. And then you have Mac Pro, a little more niche, a little more expensive, not a lot of people buying it. So of course, if you're buying a Mac for your desktop, you're buying an iMac. So with that logic, Apple said, all right, you know what? We wanna make an even more powerful desktop for all these people who are pushing iMac to its limits. You want an even more powerful workstation machine. That's where the idea of iMac Pro was born. But the thing is, those aren't the actual professionals most of the time. And the people who chose the Mac Pro over the iMac chose it for a certain reason. And those same people are most likely going to choose the new Mac Pro over the iMac Pro again. So basically the question is, what buyer is there? Is there a buyer that's gonna want a more high-end machine, a workstation grade Mac that's more powerful than the current iMac, but can't wait for the new Mac Pro to come out? A pretty impatient one, basically, and that's kind of why it seems like a trap. Basically, iMac Pro is in this really specific, narrow target demographic, in this awkward space above the current iMac, but where people are not getting the future Mac Pro. They're kind of still okay with the all-in-one design. I'm sure this thing will be great for all sorts of content creators, for YouTubers, or for like photographers, and people who like the current iMac and were getting away with using that for all their editing. That's still a great machine. It's still a great display. All of that still remains. But you have to know if you're in that target demographic 
or if you're just too impatient to wait for the new Mac Pro. This thing will be an absolute beast. I have no doubts about that. That's supported by everything we see on paper. The specs are awesome. But the biggest downside for me with this thing is of course that it's not really upgradable, just like the current iMacs. It doesn't appear to have a RAM hatch like previous iMacs have, so that's not upgradable. And iFixit says that you can technically get to the CPU and change it if you want, but most people won't be doing that. So you're expected to live with the specs that you buy for the entire life of the machine. And that's what separates it from the new modular Mac Pro that we're still expecting. The 5K display is great, you know, but what if I wanna to upgrade to a not glossy display or maybe an 8K display a year or two down the road? You know, the GPUs are great, but what if in a year or two, GPUs have gotten way better and I wanna upgrade it to a newer, better compatible one? It's just that all-in-ones like the iMac have to be replaced all-in-one and it's kinda of hard to get rid of an iMac Pro that starts at 5,000 bucks when a couple new GPUs come out. And that's just the starting price at 49.99, but it's anyone's guess what the highest end fully loaded iMac Pro will cost. I, my guess will be it'll be around $9,000. That's my guess. Maybe you can leave your guesses in the comment section below, but that's pretty much it. That's the iMac Pro explained in a nutshell. We have six months to see what it actually looks like. Until then, thank you for watching. Talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.